Hi, Antonia. It's so Sorry. good to see you again. You too. Sorry, I had like a problem when I went in. It didn't let me request, so I had to come back out and figure it out again. But <laughs> I'm here now. Oh this goodness. happens all the time. It's okay. Yeah. Um, you look really radiant. So this <laughs> quarantine, I guess, treating you very well. I hope so. And maybe it's just the lighting. You look really good, also. Oh, just thank you. That's when different. I saw you last time. <laughs> Um, you've changed your hair color, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I was going. You know that meme where they say like, "Don't do anything dramatic with your hair during quarantine." Yeah, I did that, <laughs> and now I can't go back because the salons are closed. So I just have to kind of work with what I have now. So you did that yourself, or you let someone else experiment? Um. I like to say I did it by myself, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, I think go, make, bringing it back to normal will have to be like a self thing. But you look good anyway. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so now that you're here, let me formally introduce you to everybody. Um, we have now our reigning Miss Supranational 2019, Antonia Porcel, and. Uh, you are someone that not only many youngers look up to, but I look up to as well. Oh, so from my fellow Indians and from myself, Swadika. Namaste. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did I do it right, by the way? Yeah, it's, it's very similar. Um, but I think in India, you do it like with your arms out, right? Like this. But in like this. Thailand, like usually the arms are down like this. Okay, like But this. it's very similar. Yeah. And yeah. I think, if I'm not wrong, hopefully, it's like on your chest. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how have you been do doing in this quarantine? Um, good. What's your I usual guess? day like? Uh, wake up, walk my dogs. Um, I want to say that I work out, but then I would kind of be lying. So I guess <laughs> I work out sometimes. Depends on my mood. Um, and then I have like my online classes and stuff like that. So, I'm so definitely your occupied. like university classes are going on online. Yeah. Yeah, like same pinch. My uh, pageant preparation is going online, and uh, I don't know if this must be happening with you as well that the teacher gets stuck in a funny, funny position, yes. and then you can't <laughs> do anything but look at it and stare and giggle, or maybe wait yeah. for them to call you back. Exactly. It's it's so funny, but you can't, you feel bad for laughing because, you know, <laughs> they don't choose to get their picture or video frozen in that moment. Yeah. But you must be missing, uh, you know, going out, seeing your friends. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I definitely miss going out and seeing, you know, my friends and everything, which sucks, but I guess it's so how definitely the for island. Good. Um, it it's, I want to say that it's going well. I mean, you can, I, don't, I don't really know because they don't really update us very constantly. But from what I know is right now, all the shopping malls, everything is closed except for supermarkets and pharmacies. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything is online. Curfews from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., and um, that was it until I think yesterday. Yesterday, they announced that some provinces are safe areas now, so they can start to travel. Mm -hmm. um, they just announced that they're extending curfew until next month. And some places may slowly start to open between the beginning of next month and June. So hopefully it will go as follows and not extended beyond Stand. June. <laughs> we are hoping the same thing. Uh, by the way, the moment the lockdown lifts or curfew lifts, uh, who's the first person you would like to meet and the first place that you'd want to go? Oh my gosh, I have so <laughs> many answers. I don't even know because, you know, uh, after after my traveling, my last the the last country I visited was uh, Vietnam, and then yeah. at the end of March I was supposed to go to France um, for the Emmys, 
the Kids oh Emmy Award to God. present the Emmy on stage oh and everything. Oh my God! So excited! Oh my, God. Oh my goodness! I but can't believe that. Yeah, it was delayed. So, if I could, I would go there if it was still going on. But I think once you know everything is settled and we're allowed to go outside, I would definitely um, go see my friends. I mean, what I wouldn't go action? out to yeah. you know shopping malls yes, immediately. To- for sure maybe just mingle what was your reaction when you got to know that you know you'll be going to the emmys oh my gosh i've actually i actually knew from i think uh valeria when she told me because after i had won we were roomed together for a week cuz she stayed a week longer and she was telling me how amazing it was and andre was telling me about all the dresses i'm going to be wearing and how i'm going to be presenting the award giving a speech and i was like oh my god i'm so excited Oh god. Oh, yeah, I was like beyond excited. I can't even explain, but and you can imagine how devastated I was when they said they had postponed. <laughs> exactly. It. I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, but I really hope that you know it comes back and you get the chance to go there. Fingers because crossed. yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. I really hope that for you. Okay, so um I have a lot of questions which I in uh, spontaneously quite a lot i've already <laughs> asked but i've taken a lot of questions from the viewers as well so uh, i've heard that you've lived in seven countries right yes i think so, seven seven or eight i'm not sure around there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what are they what are those countries that you've lived in um i've lived in thailand of course <clears throat> thailand india uh singapore those two when i was like a baby so i guess it sort of counts uh india singapore mexico vietnam which is where i lived the longest um malaysia um denmark for a bit and oh my gosh i'm forgetting a country what country is it <laughs> oh my gosh I don't remember. <laughs> oh, Spain. Spain. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I did one year of university there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how come this happened that you've been living in so many countries, you know? Yeah, um well, my dad is an expat, so his company is like working around the world. They have branches in different countries. Um so he could basically choose where he wanted to work. Um so that's why we were moving around a lot but after i think after vietnam he actually could just have chosen to live in denmark or anything but it was just easier to move back to thailand because it would be easier for my mom and everything so yeah it's mostly because of my dad's job okay so i'm guessing that your dad met your mom when he was traveling yeah actually my dad came to asia in 1991 i think and uh he actually met my mom in thailand at like a party or something i don't but know but you have thai and half danish right danish yeah yeah so yeah uh, is it like you relate more to uh, one culture or you're like exactly half and half i think i'm exactly half and half I mean being here I feel maybe my way of thinking is more western and being in Europe my way of thinking is more asian so I guess I kind of got the best of both worlds world um, yeah which I like to think is in my own advantage because it's a different approach to what is normally you know thought of in Denmark or in Thailand oh wow <laughs> Also so by the way you came to India uh you were there for my crowning and i guess yeah. you spent quite some time here um traveling and i mean like uh, you went to see some places with uh, prathmesh so yeah. how was your time here oh my gosh it was amazing it was my first trip and it was the like one of the best trips actually i've only had three trips but all of them <laughs> were really really good um but i felt like india was kind of I don't know it felt different it felt like I was going to somewhere I was already very familiar with like I didn't feel 
like I stood out and I didn't feel like I fit in at the same time, but I felt like I was at home, which is really, really weird because <laughs> I don't remember then, being there at all. I only hear stories from my parents because they have like crazy stories about India. So I was just thinking of that while I was sightseeing and everything. And I was taking like a bunch of photos. <laughs> and Pratamesh told us to go try what's it called? Pani Puri. Oh, so you and already had, tried it. Yes, and everyone <laughs> has the same reaction as you. It's so funny because like who was I sitting next to? I sat next to um Aditya. Aditya Kapoor, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. And I told him as well and he was like, What? Really? Like you tried that? And I said, Yes. <laughs> I think it's because it's like a street spicy. food and yeah exactly yeah. but um yeah it was very it shocked my palate because I actually thought it was a hot dish or like a hot <laughs> you know meal but it was cold and I was like my whole mouth was very very confused but it was really really good and then we went to uh what's it called the queen's like the the queen's necklace yeah, yeah. And took some photos there and the Queen's Gate. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it was very, not that many places, but each place was very fun to be and really interesting to experience. We also went to this like local restaurant. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember what I had there or. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember we went there and then it was just a really, really great day. So glad you enjoyed. And um, I remember I was at the backstage and when you were sitting on the judges panel, I saw you wearing this beautiful pink lehenga. Yes. So tell me about it. How did you feel, you know, wearing Indian traditional dress? I felt really honored, actually, and very um, kind of, I felt... How do you say? I just felt really honored to be able to wear, you know, part of your culture and to kind of, you know, show the world as well what how beautiful it is. And I remember uh, Miss Natasha asked me, she was like, do you want to wear a gown or do you want to wear like something traditional? And I was like, give me something traditional, please. <laughs> because I can wear a gown anywhere, but I can't anywhere. always yeah. wear something traditional from India. So I was like, okay, give me please something traditional. Um, doesn't matter what it is. And then that night I got like four huge bags of dresses or lehengas. Um, to my room and I had to try all of them on and it was the best thing like even though I didn't get to wear all of them just trying them on I felt so happy Andre can vouch for that because I was like hey, I was so happy the whole time <laughs> but yeah it was it was really special to be able to to wear something traditional and really honoring to be able to showcase it as well yeah, you looked really pretty. Um, I guess I told you. you that time also when I met you at the breakfast that <laughs> I couldn't take my eyes off you, but I, <laughs> then I knew I had to go on the stage, so I had to focus. <laughs> but you did okay. really good too. You did really good. You looked really pretty. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, how do you say thank you in uh, Thai? Kop kun ka. Uh, kop, kop kun ka. Kop yes, kun ka. exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you must have met Asha Bhatt also. She is Miss Supranational from yes. 2014. Yes, I so met her during your, uh, your interviews, when we did the interviews. Yes. Yeah, I remember Andre was saying, you have to meet her, you're going to love her so much. She, she, he was speaking like so highly of her, saying how she's so amazing. She's literally the perfect person to, you know, get to know and follow her footsteps. And everything so I was really excited to meet her and I was actually a little bit nervous because I didn't know like I knew I was meeting a super sister but I just felt like because of everything Andre said I was really nervous so when I met her I was like hi <laughs> it's so nice to meet you <laughs> but she was so nice so grounded and so sweet and I'm really glad I got to meet her she was like just relax you know we're this is how we're gonna do it don't, no pressure. So I was like, okay, no pressure. 
yeah. actually that happened with me when i was meeting you and andre for the breakfast because <laughs> same thing uh, everybody had told me that she is you know very down to earth she's very intelligent very sweet she's a perfect person for my supra and oh. uh, then i was also oh my god okay uh, i got a little nervous at that time but oh. then we had a great time yeah It was so sad though that we didn't get to talk longer but exactly. it was nice to get to like personally talk to you and get to know you better. So uh I've heard that you are interested in Bollywood like you love Bollywood. So do you yes. watch Bollywood movies a lot? I'm trying to watch more because I have this thing where I have trouble focusing on a movie when I have to read subtitles. So for Bollywood I would be willing to really try and multitask this because <laughs> at the at your show I was so mesmerized and so in awe of you know the 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 dances and the singing and the performances how it's so big and grand and glamorous and I was literally sitting like oh. like that the whole time <laughs> and I I had to like take a minute to put myself together but you know I love everything about all these performances so if I get the chance I would definitely love to try out Bollywood but I think the first step is to get familiar with you know the language, language. and how the movies go and everything so I would definitely that would be at the top of my list <laughs> so is there any favorite actor of yours yet I feel like it's really biased if I say it because they're the only two that I know but I'll just say Asha Bhatt because she's my super sister. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I need to watch more and then I'll give you an answer the next time we talk. <laughs> okay, definitely we'll wait for you to complete one movie or become a fan of someone. Yes. <laughs> properly like follow them. Yeah. Uh and then you'll have to do a Bollywood dialogue. Okay. Yeah, I for the next uh, small steps. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so that <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> okay, so uh in one of your uh, interviews I uh I've heard that you want to establish your own PR agency. Am I right? Advertising yes. and PR agency that would change the uh beauty standards or how we look at beauty. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really excited and interested in knowing how uh how are you going to do this? Like how Honestly, you go about this? Honestly it's not easy that's for sure because it has this ideology of beauty has been around for a really long time and you know slowly it starts to change but it doesn't happen you know in the click of a finger so i think what's important is to really start with educating myself with you know what is going on right now and what are the small you know bits and pieces that i can take out of it that can help me in the future and what i think i benefit right now is that i'm on kind of the opposite side so i'm in front of the camera right now so i understand firsthand what it's like to be constantly criticized about how you look and feeling that you're not good enough exactly you're not good enough exactly and i told myself like if this is what it has to be then how are all of these girls wishing to be in my position and if they do get to this position i never want any young lady or young man to feel the way i felt so i think what's important is to kind of not see it as a negative thing completely because every negative has a little bit of positive so kind of just pick out bits and pieces that i can work with and then you know start learning from other people other agencies through work and then when i have yeah. all the knowledge that i can share i will try to start my own firm and you know slowly get into it i mean i don't know exactly right now how it's going to be in 10 years so i can't really give you an answer about how i'm going to do it because it is all about adapting to the situation because maybe in 10 years it will already have changed and then i have that's more to true, work with true. so it really depends on how the situation goes in that 
but Hi. i really loved your thought you know it's really inspirational and uh, you've tried to combine your studies and something that uh, is very close to your heart so that's something you can really give back to the society in that manner uh, yes I actually that. in that sense i've also heard that you want to start your own foundation for the education of children right yeah yeah so um can you tell us more about it yes of course um actually i have like a plan written on my computer already um yeah. but it really can't be i mean it can be uh like where you started yourself and everything but i feel like in order to start a real journey you need to have different perspectives and different voices to help you kind of grow your mindset so i'm okay. trying right now to get people who would be interested in doing the same thing um to give me their input as well um but the initial idea is to not go like start a huge non-profit organization but start really small just like small. a small home a foundation that works together with maybe other organizations as well but to focus on you know mental health physical health of children and also to kind of be a support system for them during their time of growth and also it's a little bit taboo to talk about right now given like culture and everything but i feel like sex education is something that needs to be talked about as well exactly. and um it's really difficult to kind of talk about it in a culture where it's encouraged not to exactly <laughs> so that I, one will have yeah, to be very that. slow because um given like the situations in thailand and stuff i feel like this is something that needs to be talked about to students and i mean education is for everyone but in order to get the message to grow into the person and for them to for these children to share what they learn it really starts off young so if we just kind of break the stereotype break the taboo and talk to these kids like it's something normal which it is this is something i also want to focus on um so i have different things i want to focus on i'm still working on how they can all mold together and if i can do that you know i think just that to make great. even a that small difference great. in someone's life would be the greatest thing for me exactly because like just as you said that when children are growing in their growth years that's when they uh, most of their emotions and their mentality is shaped and that's yeah. when from uh, their uh, the insecurities stem out from their yeah. growing years right so exactly. that's very important that they get the physical mental support that time and the correct education exactly. i really hope that you are able to bring your plan to practical application and i would Thank really you. love to see you working towards it thank you so much um, i hope so too <laughs> huh uh, yes i hope so too especially given the current situation situation yes yes yeah. exactly um i think that i there's something that i wanted to ask you and uh, i don't know if it's been talked about before or not but i heard that you initiated a campaign in your college campus for uh, yeah. sexual harassment right and yeah. uh, can you tell us about how you started this because it's a very brave and bold move to do and to head a campaign like this that's going to uh, you know help every woman every girl in the college so that's something really great that you've done thank you so much actually i'm so happy that you brought it up um yeah it's not really commonly talked about when i do my lives and everything but um Actually I didn't start it on my own so I don't want to take full credit for it. Um I started it with two of my friends who um I work really closely with when we do you know orphanage work or uh charity work. And there was some situations where uh we were being told about different stories that were happening on campus by different people and some that even people told me as well. but i was in a situation where it wasn't my story to tell and i was not in a position to go to an adult or to a teacher with this information and i didn't know what guidelines our campus had to help this person 
So um, being in that difficult situation, I was talking to my two friends, which are also the co-founders of this movement. Um, it's called Policy Please. And we yeah. did not think it was going to be this big, but um, initially it was just to initiate um, a policy in the schools of rules and regulations about um, anything against sexual harassment on campus. And in order to do that, we needed to, you know, have a petition, we needed to have a campaign. Yes. We were working exactly. together with um, UN Women. So we went to the workshop there at their headquarters in Thailand and they gave us a whole, you know, start to finish, you know, start with a group of people that would be interested, uh, find a purpose and, you know, just work towards it. So we started with uh, UN Women, United Nations, and then we got them to come to our school and teach a small workshop about the misconceptions of sexual violence um which was really successful as well a lot of the things that happened really shook us because we didn't think that many people would attend and we got so many signatures for our petition and it was just really really amazing to see this amount of support and it's not only sexual like, sexual harassment towards women but men also get sexually harassed and we also want to shed light on that because I think a lot of people tend to forget that men also also get sexually harassed. Yeah. So we want to make sure that it's also about equality. It's about respect. And it's about really understanding and being considerate of other people as well. <clears throat> Sorry. So th that being said, we worked together with Cindy Bishop, who is an activist and a supermodel in Thailand. Um, who started her own campaign, which is called Don't Tell Me How to Dress, which is yeah. against, um, yeah, sexual, sexual harassment, which was uh, mainly brought up from, you know, Song Kran, where men would, like, harass women because of how they dress and everything. Yes. So we worked together with her because it's very similar, and her movement was very successful, so we wanted kind of, like, a guide to help us as well. Um, so we did, like... Um, uh, uh, like a campaign on campus that invited, you know, all the students to come and learn through the UN. We got someone from the UN uh, women to come and talk about it as well. Um, and we have officially become the first private university in Thailand to have a policy it put in place against sexual harassment on campus, which is a very, very big step. And it's so emotional because we worked so hard to get here. All Everyone we had to talk to to convince them how important this was. And I'm so happy because all the people who came to us for help have now gotten the chance to, you know, feel more confident and comfortable in their voice and telling their stories because it's all about support and, and love. And I'm just so glad that I can be a part of it. So now we are working together with other student groups in different universities, public and private, so that they can, we can not tell them what to do, but we want to encourage them and be kind of like a guiding light for them to do the same in their own schools so that this policy is recognized as something that should already be put in place rather than something that has to be asked to be put in place. Exactly, and exactly especially in Asia where, you know, it's not really talked about, we sure plan to, you know, branch out as much as we can. So fingers crossed that we keep going. Um, but yeah, it's sorry, I like went totally on and on about it. It's just something like I'm so, so happy about. And I would not have been able to make it I am so happy that, about too, this, sure. that you've done this. Yeah. It's a brave move. I got goosebumps while you were talking <laughs> about it. Thank you. Because it's really great that uh, what happens is many people realize that something is going wrong, but very few people actually take a step towards it and make a yeah. change and you've done it. And it's time to take it to another level. And I'm sure that you'll do that too. And Thank I am really... You. Uh, you know, I'm, I am inspired by you right now. So inspired oh. by you that uh, you made me feel that, you know, you just need 
uh, courage and your thoughts to take steps towards something and you exactly. can do it exactly thank you so much <laughs> oh. <laughs> so um uh, since we have had such a deep talk right now i want to lighten the mood <laughs> and i have some rapid not rapid fire questions but would you rather questions oh gosh so, okay <laughs> okay so i'm just stressed clear your mind and and uh, <laughs> here we go so would you rather have the power to read minds or see the future oh, read minds oh okay. i don't know i guess yeah okay next question yeah. before i change my mind <laughs> would you rather have super hearing or x-ray vision super hearing uh would you rather want to fly or run at super speed fly <laughs> <laughs> not really you, rapid from my point you want like, both of the you want both the options to happen and you're exactly. like so confused i can't give up like, hmm, can i have both <laughs> <laughs> uh would you want to teleport or time travel uh uh teleport okay um uh would you rather only eat dessert or only eat savory <gasps> Oh my god. Uh That's an unfair question because <laughs> you can't have one without the other. That's true. Well, I would I would pass this question as well. So yeah, I'll keep, I'll cut you some slack. <laughs> okay. Uh would you rather speak many languages or be able to speak to animals? Speak many languages. Okay. So you've done average in this round because you took a lot of time to answer. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I was busy thinking because I was like, okay, what if I had this? What would I do with this? And what if I had this? What would I do? And then it's just like, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have wanted both as well. So, exactly. but I'm on the other side. I'm asking the questions. I can't be unfair. <laughs> So okay now I want to know about your pageant journey and um how was it preparing for your pageant when did you start and uh, how long did you train these are the important questions people want to know about your pageant journey so much but I wanted to save it for the end so uh, let's start with it okay so um for those of you who don't know I actually decided very last minute to join a beauty pageant. Honestly, I never really considered joining beauty pageants at all. It wasn't something that was in my scope or anything that I was really interested in. Um but one day I got a call from my friend who asked me if I wanted to try it out because the auditions were coming up. Um so I said, "Okay, why not?" Um it was something new, so I decided to be a bit you know out of my comfort zone um and that was i think 2 weeks before the actual competition started happened uh, yeah so i was very you know hectic about everything you know i wasn't um i wasn't physically ready i wasn't mentally prepared for um what was coming my way all i knew was the only thing i can change right now is what i feel is like a physical aspect that i can change so i knew i wasn't the ideal weight that they probably wanted so i was working out a lot i was eating clean and everything um so that was within the 2 weeks and then um the whole process of you know screening it was definitely not as hardcore as yours you know with all the traveling and all the interviews and the mini competitions um definitely not not like that uh, bec- mainly because supra national is not really as known in thailand um so you know it's not as hardcore as you know the other pageants but it was definitely a challenge mentally for me um after going there i saw the girls and i was like okay hey, it don't really look like them i look a little bit bigger 
And I was on a TV show before where I was constantly bullied about my weight. And it was really difficult for me to get over. And I didn't want to go through that again. So I really tried to be able to, you know, lose as much weight as possible because of what ideology I had in my head, right. not because of what the facts they were. were. For, yeah. yeah. So I knew for sure that I had a good you know, way of thinking. I knew why I was there. And I think that that's one of the main things that stood out. Um, I noticed during the question and answering uh, when they asked, like, why are you here? I was the last one. And all the girls were talking about how they wanted to improve themselves and everything, um, which I respect. And I think this is a learning journey for ourselves. So I felt like my answer wasn't the same because I initially joined so that I could gain a bigger platform to help more people. So me joining actually had nothing to do with myself. It was more to reach a broader audience with my cause. Um, so I think that's what gave me the confidence in that moment, despite having that kind of second thought. Um, so it was mostly the whole journey was very eye-opening and very scary for me because as you can see i don't really look like a typical thai girl um and i thought that's what they wanted i thought that they wanted this you know measurements of a person i thought they wanted this way it was all really a mind game with myself and i had to take the time to kind of break through that because these were the things that were limiting me from trying my best and achieving the best I could do. So it was like a mind game for me from myself, which wasn't really fair now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a journey and it was a very good experience. I did not think I was going to win. Um, so when I won, I was very shocked. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, I would have been happy either way because the journey itself was a big experience and very eye-opening for me. So, yeah, that's... It was very... It was very short. Sure. It was like maybe four weeks in total. Yeah. I remember actually you telling me this, that you were, you were feeling quite unprepared uh, when you yeah. were in your natural pageant and then your father, you know, uh, supported you, gave you this medal support that... Uh, if yeah. you don't even try, you'll not come to know if, exactly. you know, so just go there, give you 100% and then you'll see, right? Exactly, yeah. And I live by that every day. My dad always kind of has to wake me up from my little fantasy. And <laughs> I'm really blessed that, like, he was there when I was really feeling my lowest. And he just, like, woke me up a little bit because I already knew what he was saying. I just didn't want to listen to to that coming from myself so when he told me like how do you know you're not gonna succeed or if you're gonna win something if you don't even try your best because of all the doubts you tell yourself you know so that's kind of why it was like it was really a battle with myself and in order to break that barrier I had to get out of my comfort zone so I had to wake up pretty much and you know, try my best. And if I didn't win, it's okay. It's a learning experience. And I know what to do if I decide to do another pageant. Um, but in the end, um, nothing bad happened. And I won. So yeah, <laughs> I think I owe it to my dad. <laughs> exactly. We do owe this to our retreats to our parents, because yes, when we are course. feeling low, it's only them we call up. And exactly. then they are asked to they are there to cheer us on that, you know, you are the queen of the world. Don't you dare yeah. doubt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, when you went for the pageant, Miss Supranational, so how was your day like there? It a, was very... Yeah, I feel like a lot of people will say it's like very busy. You don't get enough sleep. They don't feed you. But actually, we got the right amount of sleep. We were never, you know, pressured or anything. It was very, I wouldn't say relaxed. It was still a lot of pressure because you still wanted to win, right? right. Um, but, you know, they fed us well. They gave us time to get ready. 
they told us all the details when we needed it and they told us very clearly what we needed to do um and there was a lot of you know photo shoots interviews um like rehearsal of course and really getting to know all the different people all the girls all the different cultures and yeah the like mini competitions with national costume the talent show the um you know supra supra model one yes. as well um so yeah that was very fun um at one point you don't even notice that it's a competition anymore because you're having so much fun it was fun um, yeah but in the end it is a competition so you kind of also have to remember that as Come well back. <laughs> yeah but i think the best part of forgetting that you're in a competition is that your true self comes out you know your true personality comes out and people get to see what type of person you really are and that's what they're looking for for a winner they want to see who they are in different situations and how yeah. real they are yeah so i think the three weeks of getting to know everyone is a very valuable part of the final decision when they decide who wins that's really true so when you came there there were like 77 countries did you feel scared intimidated or did you feel uh, anything like how i'm going to make myself stand out something like that or you were sure that you know i uh, from your national pageant journey you, you knew that uh, i'm going to do this as well i felt like everything you said i was scared i was nervous i was feeling a little bit insecure i was very intimidated because all of the girls were so beautiful. so beautiful and i was very shy at the beginning um which i realized very, like very quickly that this is not going to be okay because you need to stand out being your true self of course you need to stand out in the best way or the best version of you and being shy does not help that at no. all yeah so i realized very quickly that this will not go so um i tried to push myself to be more approachable you know to approach different girls introduce myself and after like it's easy to kind of fake yourself the first three days you know you want to make sure that the other girls know that you know you're there you know thailand is here um, <laughs> yeah but then yeah. after those three days you kind of can't fake it anymore so i tried to just tell myself that you know don't be fake be real because in the end this is the type of person or this is what they're looking for and i told myself okay if me being myself doesn't help me win then maybe this wasn't it for me like you know this wasn't my final path So exactly. I just tried my best to portray my my true self as much as possible and being the best version of myself um towards everybody not just to the girls but to the staff members to the hotel staff everybody because you know if it wasn't for them everything wouldn't be possible so it's really just being grateful and being happy that you're even there is already a huge step so Yeah. But I did feel everything with the moment I walked into those like hotel doors. I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I felt also when I came to my national pageant. So uh, I guess that's why I relate to it. And um when you were about to walk on the final day, what were the things that were running in your mind? Were you stressed or you were like, "I'm just going to have fun. We'll see what happens." yeah pretty much because up to that point we had um we had so many rehearsals so so many rehearsals that being on stage didn't even feel like you were being on stage it just felt like another rehearsal you were relaxed you were you know doing your best but before that i just told myself you know what we're already almost at the end they probably they most likely or probably already know who or the idea of who they want already so there's really nothing you can do apart from do your best when you walk down that stage this is the last moment you have to show those 12 judges who you are 
through your energy and the way that you present yourself on stage. So I was just like, you know what? I have to do my best because the blood, sweat and tears it took for me to get here will not be worth it if I go back home tomorrow wishing I had tried harder. Exactly. That's so I was just like, put it all right? on there. And, you know, you can't control your fate at this point. So I just said, have fun. Because it's an experience and you have to cherish the experience you have because you can't go back and do it again. So. And then your name was announced as the winner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what did you feel then? Shocked. Because I really did not think I was going to win. Um, yeah, I was very, I was like squeezing Yana, um, Miss, South, uh, Miss Namibia's hand. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Um, but I said to her, you know, if it's not me, I'm really happy it's you. Um, and I would have said the same thing to any of the other super girls because they really all are so beautiful inside and so deserving. And we waited, which felt like forever. And then they called Thailand and I was so sure I was going to hear Namibia, but I heard Thailand and I, like my whole body just froze and I felt tears coming down my face. And I was like, no, 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 don't cry <laughs> because now the camera's on you and you don't want makeup running down your face. Um, yeah, I was just Anyone really, really, photograph? really happy. Exactly. So I was like, no, no, cry, cry later. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was really, really amazing to hear my name because I knew at that moment, you know, I had made my, my country proud. I made my parents proud, myself proud, most importantly, because I knew how hard it took for me to get here, to feel that confident on stage and to finally hear my country's name be called out. It almost sounds like everything was kind of worth it. And, you know, it was just really, really amazing for, for me. And I can imagine for, you know, all the other past winners. But yeah, I was, it took my breath away. <laughs> I have seen the video and it gives, if, you know, whenever I see a crowning video, whoever it might be, it gives me chills every time. Because then... Yeah. Uh, you automatically happen to, you know, imagine yourself and then see how would you react. And yeah. uh, it's just something magical, very magical. And that's it something no one can take it away from you. That yeah. moment is yours. Exactly. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah? <laughs> yes, that was perfect. <laughs> so, uh, so much for uh, coming live with me and sharing your experience and uh, especially the work that you've done for the, for the society. They were very inspirational. They've inspired me personally. And you, so many viewers uh, have come. They've got to know you better. And I really enjoyed talking to you. And I, I have already shared a crowning moment with you and I hope to share it once again. And uh, I hope these conditions, uh, the they get better and we get to see each other at Miss Supranational yes. very, very soon. Thank you so much for having me. It was very nice to talk to you again, even though it's virtually. Hopefully yeah. <laughs> in the new, near future, we will be able to talk personally and more, you know, in person. Um, but thank you so much for your time and for all these questions that are actually very new questions as well, which is very nice all the time so if anything i'm always a message away so hope to talk to you soon i hope to talk to you very very soon i really want to meet you and all the other supra sisters that i will yes, have this course. year and thank you so much for joining um thank take you. care lots of love thank you you too bye bye, -bye. <laughs>